Welcome, this is uh, a session on internet communication. Even though there are many different uh, ways in which uh, you communicate on the internet uh, technical information, I am going to concentrate on emails. So, there are going to be 2, 3 sessions on emails and in this uh, session we will particularly talk about how to begin an email and how to end an email. So, as I said internet communication consists of several things, emails is one of the ways in which you communicate, then there are blogs which some of you might be writing and then there are uh, internet pages like Wikipedia where people try to communicate technical information and uh, uh, it would be an interesting idea to see if Twitter can be used for technical communication for example. Recently there was a, a contest of writing a short story using Twitter. So, for example, can you do a similar thing? Can you take one of your papers and communicate the idea in 140 uh, characters or something? In any case, emails are meant for much smaller audience, blogs are meant for a slightly more wider audience and Wikipedia is meant for the entire universe. So, and, and uh, probably Twitter also is uh, in to some extent uh, limited communication of which emails is the one which uh, almost all of us uh, use, uh, have used and will continue using. So, I have some thoughts about writing emails and uh, this is what I think. So, you might disagree and you are welcome to disagree. So, if something else works for you or if you think something else is the right way of doing it, uh, you are welcome to do so. But uh, I hope that these uh, set of uh, slides will make you think about those. And after thinking through, if you still think that what you are doing is right, of course, you can continue doing so. Okay. The first thing is uh, your email ID should be preferably your name. You should not keep it as a nickname or some other funny name or uh, something else uh, which means maybe something in some other language or uh, with uh, some unnecessary numbers or characters. So, all this uh, should be avoided uh, in a professional setting. If you are sending a professional email, it is preferable that the email ID comes from the way you are professionally addressed. So, your full name probably with some initials is uh, preferred. Okay. So, if you think about why we write emails, uh, sometimes we write to get information. Uh, so, I am writing this mail to get this and this information. Sometimes you are writing to communicate information, you want to let people know that there is a talk for example, tomorrow in the department at 5 o'clock, so and so is the speaker and tea will be served before whatever. So, so there is some information that you want to communicate. Sometimes you write emails to collaborate, you have some idea of uh, something and you have a collaborator, you want to pitch the idea so that they can do the experiment or simulation and get back with the results and then you can have discussion and so on. And all this can happen over emails. Sometimes you write to resolve disputes, somebody is unhappy about something, they have written to you saying that this is the problem we are facing and you are trying to resolve the dispute uh, and somebody might be writing an email to complain to you and uh, sometimes you might be responding to a complaint. Okay. Uh, it becomes harder and harder to write emails uh, which belong to this uh, resolving disputes, complaining and explaining when you are having a complaint against you and so on. Uh, it is of course, easier to write when you are trying to get some information. It is also probably straightforward to communicate information and the collaboration is somewhere in between. So, sometimes it is difficult to collaborate certain ideas and thoughts over email, maybe at that time you have to Skype. Uh, but majority of the things can be done over email. Okay. So, the email consists of the following things. So, there is a subject line where you try to give a short summary of what the email is about and then there is the address line where you address the person who is receiving the mail and then as I describe later, there should be a greeting or introduction of yourself depending on the situation. And then there is the body of the email where you describe in as many paragraphs as needed the information uh, or your explanation or your complaint, whatever it is. And then there is a sign off uh, section and then typically most of the emails also con consists of a signature file. Okay. So, the subject should be very short, it should contain all vital information. 
So, depending on the recipients of the email, same message might have different subject lines and it should have different subject lines. And so, tuning the subject line according to the recipients is very, very important uh, because for example, you might be interacting with one of your classmates regarding a doubt you have in a particular problem. Uh, you can say problem, doubt and then write that mail to your colleague. But if you are writing to the TA or instructor, they will be getting hundreds of mails which says uh, problem, doubt. You should say what is the subject or what is the course code and which assignment and which problem. So, you can say MM419 problem 2 doubt, then the or, or, or assignment 1 problem 1 doubt, then the receiver immediately knows the context and then they can respond accordingly. There is one mistake that people sometimes tend to do is to leave the subject line blank and you should never do that. There is another mistake that people do is that they keep forwarding mails after fourth or fifth forward all you can see in the subject line is FWD and lots of uh, uh, brackets. So, you should avoid, you should edit uh, the forwarding uh, email subject if necessary depending on the recipient. So, you know what is the most important information you are trying to communicate in the mail and that should come through your subject because most of the people if their mailbox is flooded with lots of mails will look at the subject and decide to prioritize. So, you should help them prioritize by giving all the vital information regarding your email. Then there is the question of address. So, you have to address dear so and so. So, you can use miss or mister, you can use professor or doctor. Professor or doctor is preferred because that is not gender specific. Sometimes if you do not know the gender of the person who you are responding to, it is much more safer to say professor or doctor because then you do not have to worry about whether you have to address a person as miss or mister. Uh, and then there is uh, this uh, other thing you might sometimes have noticed, somebody writes a dear professor guru and then there is a comma. Sometimes people write dear professor guru and then there is a colon. So, which one should be used? The reason why we are using lots of uh, these uh, punctuation marks is to tell people how to read your email. When you are talking to a person, your tone and your body language is very clear. But when you are writing something down, people read it and people might not read it the way you intend them to read it. The punctuation marks are there to tell people how to read it. When you have a comma or colon, people are going to give a pause there. If it is a comma, it is a smaller pass and if it is a colon, it is a bigger pass. Okay. So, it is more polite to put a colon because like if you barge into the room of one of your professors or your head of the department, you will address the person and then you will wait till the person responds to you. Okay. So, you walk in and say sir, then you wait or you walk in and say professor so and so and then you wait. So, this colon indicates that you are doing the same thing when you are writing the mail. You are addressing dear professor guru and then you are waiting because then I give my complete attention to you and then you are going to start. So, this is the information that uh, this punctuation is communicating. So, you have to after you write the mail using the punctuations or you should read through wherever you give pass when you are reading it through you should give the corresponding punctuation mark so that the recipient also reads more or less in the same fashion. Okay. And of course, there is the question of uh, do you address as dear professor Guru Rajan or dear professor Guru. Of course, it is more formal to address as dear professor Guru Rajan. If it is a slightly more informal mail, so you can address as dear professor Guru. So, how you address whether you address with the full name or whether you address with the half name or nickname depends on your familiarity with the person as well as the context. For example, there are mails which I might write to one of my colleagues saying dear professor Pawar or dear professor Ajay and whether I write as dear professor Pawar or dear professor Ajay depends on what type of mail I am writing. If I am writing a very formal mail requesting my colleague to for example, come and address a particular conference or meeting, I will still address by the last name dear professor Pawar because that is a more formal way of addressing. But if I am writing a mail to request him to be in some committee meeting that I am conducting next week, then probably I will address him as uh, dear uh, Professor Ajay or sometimes even as uh, dear Ajay. So, it depends on the context. So, same person 
you might be writing to, but depending on the context of the email, the way you will address will also be different. But uh, you should never address as a dear mister and then with a comma continue or a dear miss or just a dear. Okay. So, these things are not allowed. You can address a person by the person's uh, rank or position. Okay. You are allowed to call dear professor or dear director or dear dean or dear assistant registrar or dear student or dear faculty whatever. So, that is allowed and you should avoid uh, words like respected, esteemed etcetera when you are addressing because uh, they are not uh, uh, that professional, they give the feeling that you are being slightly unprofessional. So, it is better avoided. So, your, your address should be very professional, should be consistent with the tone and content of the mail that follows. And then there is sign off, so you should always sign off with regards or with best regards. Uh, sometimes you might sign off with sincerely or best wishes, sometimes you can also sign off uh, thanking you or looking forward to hearing from you, but in whichever way you are signing off. So, the, how you sign off depends on uh, your uh, closeness with the person and the context in which you are writing and uh, what is it that you are expecting out of the email, but uh, the sign off should be with full name. Uh, Sometimes, if you use the shorter version of the sign off, uh, that in some context means that the other person who is receiving the mail should address you by the shorter version. Okay. So, because of which it, it is okay sometimes to sign off with the shorter version, but you should know that this is what it means and depending on the context, then you have to decide whether you want the shorter version. For example, if you are submitting to a journal and if you are signing off, probably you do not want to sign off with the shorter version. But if you are writing to a colleague with whom you have started collaborating and you are just establishing collaboration, probably it is okay to write a shorter version. Okay. And please do not sign off with a title like if, if you are professor something or doctor something, do not put in your signature doctor so and so because that sounds very pompous and also sounds a little bit unprofessional. There is a place in the email to tell what your uh, position is. Uh, which is the signature file, there you can put professor or doctor so and so. Okay. And uh, please do not have any tacky codes or jokes in formal sign off, they are okay for your regular email communication, but your formal mails should not contain any of those uh, uh, kind of codes or jokes. And then we have the signature file, most email programs allow you to have a signature file and prepare a proper signature file. And this signature file basically serves the function of uh, from that you used to write in more formal letters. So, it should have postal address, phone numbers, if there are alternate email addresses, your designation and any other information. You know you might want to give the link to your home page, blog address, Twitter handle, whatever it is. So, the signature file should have all the information, so that if somebody decides to communicate with you. E by means other than email, by calling you or faxing you or sending you a letter, that information should be available at the end in the signature file. Okay. Thank you.